Why is all this stuff important? Well, it's important because half of our population is going to die of heart disease. Half of the American population dies of heart disease. Oh, yeah. And a thyroid condition leads to heart disease at some point. So that means if you're sitting in a room with six people, three of those people will die of heart disease. If I'm in the room, I'm included, I may or may not die of heart disease. So with that in mind, this is pretty important stuff. Okay, That's one of the reasons why. But it's said that diabetes, um, a thyroid condition leads to diabetes. A thyroid condition leads to things like, well, let's go over what they say, because it's right here. Let's go over some of the symptoms and, and some of the things that they're finding. Dr. Mark Starr, he talks about um, some of the symptoms that Dr. Broda Barnes found when it comes to the thyroid. He's saying fatigue, decreased sex drive, candida or yeast infections, dry skin, premature aging, infertility, constipation, PMS, repeated um, infections, headaches. Does these things sound a little common? Hypertension, which means high blood pressure, brittle nails, birth defects, mental disorders, endometriosis, diabetes, sounding familiar? When you consider the American population, multiple sclerosis, memory impairment, cancer, nervousness, heart attack, stroke, hair loss, hair loss, okay, um, high cholesterol. Remember, that's the way they used to diagnose the thyroid conditions, was looking at cholesterol levels. Nowadays, they look at a lab with just TSH. You don't see anything on a lab with just TSH. You need to do a complete lab, and even then, a lot of my patients with a thyroid condition, you do a complete lab, their it looks like they're, everything's normal. So you see why I don't even get into the labs? Because if their problem is cellular and they're not converting T4 to T3 at the cellular level, I know it sounds a little bit like this is in conflict with what I just said, but really it's not, because those labs don't show what's happening at the level of the cells, deep within the muscles or the bones or the ligaments. It just shows what's happening in the blood. The thyroid hormone doesn't travel in the blood. The thyroid hormone travels in the lymph system. It travels in the saliva and the lymph system. So there used to be a thyroid lab that I could do and my other colleagues could do to check for thyroid hormones in the, in the saliva, but the government shut it down for some reason. So we can't do that anymore. But luckily, you know, I'm able to diagnose really effectively what's going on with people's health and what's happening with their thyroid. So I don't need that, and it costs them money anyway. But man, it was a really valuable test, you know? So here's all these things. Diabetes, multiple sclerosis, memory impairment, cancer, nervousness, heart attack, stroke, hair loss, high cholesterol, intolerance to heat, or intolerance to cold, depending if they're hyper or hypothyroid. Hyper intolerance to heat, hypo intolerance to cold. Nutritional imbalances, yeah, because what drives the thyroid hormones? Nutrients, nutrients. It's the nutrients that, that allow the thyroid hormones to be metabolized. I just talked about them. Iodine and tyrosine, and there's others like chromium salts, which are really important for proper insulin balance as well, and things like zinc is necessary to, to, to have stable insulin levels. And you can't have uh, proper chromium levels and balance and vanadium and many of these other le minerals without proper levels of zinc um, in the tissue and in the blood. Muscle weakness, low immune system, overweight, arthritis, gout, low blood pressure, depression, osteoporosis, joint and muscle pain, heart palpitations, cystic breasts and ovaries, chronic fatigue, intolerance to cold, and hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia means too much insulin in the blood. Okay. Those are, those are a few of the things. Um, that's only a partial list. You know, menstrual disorders, PMS. I mean, here's some more things. He says fatigue, lethargy, sleepiness, mental impairment, depression, cold intolerance, hoarseness, dry skin, decreased perspiration, weight gain, decreased appetite, constipation, men, men, uh, mental disturbances, and menstrual disturbances, arthralgia, that, that means pain in a joint, and paresthesia, like different types of numbness and tingling or prickling in the in muscles, maybe on both sides of the body, maybe on one side of the body. Slow movement, slow speech, bradycardia, hoarseness, dry skin, non-pitting edema, mix, which is called mixedema. Remember, I talked about that. When I was a baby, I had this mixedema. It was 
I didn't know I was an ugly baby, but I mean, I, I'm hearing now from everyone that I was. And I saw the pictures, and I'm like, man, I wasn't looking too good. But, you know, I'm doing great now. So, myxedema, um, hyporeflexia, delayed relaxation of reflexes. Okay, this is important for a healthcare provider, at least. Um, those are those are some of the things. Delayed reflex. Um, so the, 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 one of the number one ways that they were able to diagnose um, a thyroid condition right around the 1950s, 60s, 70s was by looking at the deep tendon reflex um, of of the uh, the, calca the, cal the calcaneal deep tendon reflex. So they were able to measure the um, the speed of the deep tendon reflex of the uh, calcaneal deep tendon reflex. That's the, the ankle um, deep tendon reflex. And when they found it was delayed, that was the best way that they could, they could diagnose a thyroid condition. They're not doing that today. They don't look at people's upper lip. They don't check to see if they have too much mucin in their tissue. They don't look at the outer one third of their eyebrows. They're not seeing if the person has hair loss. They're not having them fill out a symptom survey form the way I do, also known as a, also known as a, um, a, um, a little health questionnaire. They're not, they're not doing that. So it's too bad, huh? Cruciferous vegetables shut down the thyroid that are raw, if they're raw. Who, who knew that? I, I mean, do you knew that? Did you know that? Eating broccoli is supposed to be good, right? The more raw food, the better? No, nah, nah, I don't think so. All the science shows that those are actually goitrogens. They, they deplete the body of iodine. They decrease, uh, they, they can cause goiters in the thyroid, the bumps that grow out of here. Um, people in the Midwest, in the middle of the country, they used to have a lot of goiters, and then they started putting iodine in the salt so that it became iodized salt. But it didn't really work because it's the wrong kind of iodine. It doesn't really, it's not really what the thyroid needs. But luckily, people didn't get goiters anymore, but they still would have thyroid trouble. So, you know, kind of like you, you know, you kind of didn't really work. <laughs> um, wheat shuts down the thyroid. It's also a goitrogen. And a lot of people who have an autoimmune condition, I can promise you they're allergic to wheat. I, I have... Let me find it for you since you're watching this. I have Noelle Thomas, the naturopath little brochure here. She talks all about it. She has a great 98-page book that talks about, it's called Separating the Wheat from the Shaft, and it talks about how common these wheat allergies are in the, in t in the entire population and how wheat is known to be one of the causes of Crohn's disease. Um, I mean, it is, it is just amazing that people are not uh, being told about this kind of stuff. Uh, it, th this, this goes into a lot of the skin conditions come from wheat. Um, a wheat allergy can last up to six months. So like once you get exposed to the wheat, you get a little bit on your tongue and then you're having a reaction for six months. A lot of pe people feel better after they eat wheat because they like the allergic response that they have. Like I feel good when I snort cocaine, but you know, being I'm a healthcare provider, I don't really do that. But you know, if I were to try it, I'd, well, I don't feel good when I snort cocaine, but if I were to try it, I'm sure I'd feel more alert. It might make me feel kind of cool, but that doesn't mean it's good for me. You know, drinking lots of alcohol and getting drunk may be fun, but it's not healthy. Do you understand? There's a lot of misinformation out there in the world of healthcare. Um, body lotion is great for dry skin, right? So if a person has dry skin on um, wherever and that's one of the thyroid symptoms. So then they start putting lotion on, and it might get rid of the dry skin, but what's causing the dry skin? Well, the oils that allow the skin to be moist and healthy are metabolized in the gallbladder and the liver. So if the gallbladder and the liver aren't working right, then the person has dry skin. If they put lotion on their skin, many of the lotions which, of which are toxic on the market Literally, I have a whole handout on this on my blog at www.docilia.com. I have a whole blog article about how this works, but a lot of people are using lotion. They think it's organic or natural, and maybe it is, but they put it on their skin, and it just so turns out to be that the organic natural lotion is actually toxic 
or have a toxin in it, one toxin out of 20 ingredients that causes them to be toxic. And those toxins are absorbed into their bloodstream through their skin. Their skin your skin is like a sponge and it's filled with blood vessels and veins and other um, nerve endings and whatnot. And then those toxins go right into the bloodstream, straight to the liver where they're filtered out and then they, they cause problems with the liver. And as you can remember, approximately 60% of the conversion of T4, inactive thyroid hormone, to T3, active thyroid hormone, takes place in the liver. So watch out for skin care products, especially body care products. <clears throat> they may not be so good for you. Do you are you following me? <clears throat>